So as we mentioned before, working with pixels and image data, the data is actually stored in a two-dimensional array. So if we want to access any of the particular pixels in this array, we have to loop through in a nested loop, where we're actually going to be looping first through each of the columns and then each of the rows, or vice versa. We can do either. But in this case, we're actually going to be uh, having an idea where we're, if we want to locate any particular pixel, pixel, we need to know its row index and its column index. For example, in this case, the column index would be I3, and the row index would be J4, right? So we count up four rows. Um, so in this case, it would be P3, comma 4, or I, comma J. We're going to use a simple notation here where I is the column index and J is the row index. And if we know any particular pixel, we can also find any of its neighbors. One, the pixel to the right of the current pixel is always i plus one comma j and the one to the left is always i minus one comma j similarly the pixel adjacent to the top is i comma j plus one and the pixel to the bottom is i comma j minus one so if we know any particular pixel we can also take into account any of its neighbors which will become important as we begin to explain other types of filtering techniques Okay, so each particular pixel at i, j, or any of the pixels are also storing some sort of color information. We spoke about earlier about how the camera actually records the red, green, and blue channels. So here, any particular color is always stored as uh, three, a composite of three values, which, which are basically the red, green, and blue channels, and each of those are always going to fall between 0 and 255. It's basically an 8-bit value. And so you can always know if it's pure red, it's 255. If it's no red, it will be zero. So the composite for this particular color here tells us that we have a redness of about 131, or approximately half of zero to 255. We have just a little bit of green in the color, so 17, and a little bit of blue, so 31. And if we use all those values, we'll actually inform a color space of an RGB model, which gives us this particular color. So let's look at an example. Here we actually have that exact same color, um, and we're taking a particular pixel from this image. And so we see that there's R113, G is 17, and blue is 31. And let's just, for example, try to isolate or understand how we think of brightness, right? If we have the color, well, how bright is that? Because with that brightness information, we can begin to extract other meaningful information from it. So there's different models. We just spoke about the RGB model, which is the red, green, blue. But we can also begin to, if we want to start to understand brightness, there's a, a lot of different models that begin to understand hue, saturation, brightness, lightness, perceived brightness. So in this case, there's a model called the HSB model, which stands for hue, saturation, and brightness. And to solve from, or to convert from RGB to brightness, basically the algorithm is take whatever the maximum RGB value is and then divide by 255. So in this case, we have a maximum value, our maximum value of any of these three values is 113, right? Our red value is the highest value. So our maximum value is 113 divided by 255. So our, in this model, the brightness is actually gonna return 0 0.44, um, right? So almost half, uh, in this, it, this brightness value is always going to be normalized between 0 and 1. So in this case, this algorithm tells us that we're about 50% or 44% bright. Um, there are other types of models, though, right? We have a, another model called hue, saturation, and lightness. And to solve for the lightness, basically convert from RGB space to HSL space, the algorithm is going to be the average of the maximum RGB value plus the minimum RGB value. So in this case, we're going to take whatever our maximum value is, 113, add 17, that's our minimum, and then divide by 2 to find the average. And then to normalize it, to get it between 0 and 1, we're going to divide by 255. So in this case, we're seeing a discrepancy in how the different models treat brightness or lightness. Right? In the example before, our brightness value was 0.44, or 44%. In this case, it's actually 25%. So in this model, um, it treats that color as only 25% as light. So there's uh, the way conversions work, there's slight discrepancies in how it treats brightness.
There's a third model, which I actually think is a little bit more accurate, which stands for perceived brightness, or HSP model. The P is actually going to, uh, to solve for P, we're going to take the square root of a constant times the red squared, um, plus another constant times the G squared, and then add a third constant plus B squared. Um, so if you do the math, if you plug in these numbers and do the math, um, the perceived brightness also equals to about 0 0.25, so it's very close to our HSL model. However, if we look at another example, if we're taking just the pure raw colors of the RGB and the CMYK space, um, we're taking this cyan, magenta, yellow, red, green, and blue, um, we can compare how each of the three models treat the brightness. The HSB model, remember, takes the maximum value and divides it by 255, which gives us um, a value of 1, because red is 255. So in this case, all of these values, the brightness is always going to be the same, and it's going to be pure brightness. Whereas the HSL model, because it's the average of the maximum plus the minimum, this is going to be 50% as bright. But the HSP model, and why I was referring to it as perhaps a more accurate model, is because it takes into account our perception of how bright color actually is. And the way we actually look at this image, yellow is actually somewhat brighter to our eyes than blue. And because we use that algorithm, in this case, the yellow is actually slightly brighter than the blue value. And green is slightly brighter than blue, um, as well as red. So the HSP model gives us a little bit of variation, um, but in, to our eyes, it reflects a more accurate rendition of the brightness value. And so here we're looking at two uh, models, and they're, they, I agree they look pretty similar, um, but they're actually using the two different models. Um, and Photoshop actually um, gives you the option to use both. If you go under Photoshop and you adjust the hue, saturation, and brightness, if, you're, if you adjust the saturation um, and you take the saturation all the way down, it will actually use the HSB model. I'm not entirely sure why, but it uses the HSB model as its method. If you were to flatten the image and take away, it, change the mode to grayscale, it actually begins to use the HSP model. Um, and so you can see slight differences here, uh, particularly in the purple, where the transition between color to black and white or grayscale here you can see there's a slight more of an edge here which is actually the perceived brightness actually makes a smooth transition between whatever color it is into its um, perceived brightness uh, composite so here we're actually it's a subtle difference but it actually does give us quite different values when we begin to analyze each pixel so from here on out we're actually going to use the HSP model in this black and white image um, as our starting point to begin to analyze and try to extract some sort of meaningful data. So what type of information could we actually extract? Well what if we wanted to actually begin to use that brightness information to find edges in an image? And the way we're going to do that is we're going to look at something called first order derivatives.